It's been just over a day since a Georgia district attorney announced charges against former President Donald Trump and 18 others. Now, his co-defendants are criticizing prosecutors who accused them of racketeering to overturn the 2020 election results. Nicole Killian reports from Atlanta, where the accused have been told you need to appear by the end of next week. Just hours after Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis announced charges against former President Donald Trump and 18 others for their alleged efforts to overturn the 2020 election in Georgia. It is now the duty of my office to prove these charges in the indictment beyond a reasonable doubt at trial. Trump said in a social media post he'll hold a news conference next Monday that will be a complete exoneration, and he repeated false claims of election fraud in Georgia. The state's Republican governor, Brian Kemp, hit back. The 2020 election in Georgia was not stolen. With nine days left to turn themselves in, the Fulton County Sheriff's Office says it expects the 19 indicted defendants, including the former president, to be booked at the Fulton County Jail. Trump's lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, who faces 13 counts for allegedly making false statements about the 2020 election, denies any wrongdoing and says he plans to surrender soon. I'll pick a day next week, try to work out the conditions of bail, because there has to be bail, I imagine. On Tuesday, Trump's other co-defendant and former chief of staff Mark Meadows sought to move the criminal charges against him from Fulton County to federal court. His lawyers say they plan to file a motion to dismiss the case, arguing nothing Mr. Meadows is alleged in the indictment to have done is criminal. Meadows was on this call with Georgia Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger in January 2021. Mr. President, everybody is on the line, and just so this is Mark Meadows, the chief of staff. During which Trump made this statement. I just want to find uh, 11,780 votes, which is one more than we have, because we won the state. So that phone call to Georgia Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger, as well as calls to Georgia's governor and other lawmakers in the state, are the reasons why this indictment is playing out in Fulton County. Now, Georgia State Capitol Atlanta actually spreads over two counties. The state capitol building and offices for government officials are in Fulton County, but Atlanta boundaries are also in DeKalb County. Now, Trump even brought up Fulton County in a phone call to Raffensperger. He claimed that a couple hundred thousand ballots had been forged with signatures on them. A hand recount of the Fulton County ballots provided no evidence of that widespread forgery, and Biden's victory was reaffirmed. Now, the charges against Trump are for violating Georgia's RICO Act. It is a law commonly used against organized crime. Legal analyst Ricky Clayman explains how prosecutors are using it in this case. When we look at the RICO Act, it originally was a federal act. It goes back to around 1970, and it was meant for the mob. It was to put the mob out of business. It's about a racketeering influence, corrupt organizations. So the mob was a corrupt organization. Then it got used in unions. That was also a way of doing looking at mob behavior that had gone into unions. And eventually there were prosecutors who decided that this was a creative tool, that if you could get a number of people, that you could see that they formed a group, an enterprise, that perhaps their activity could be considered an enterprise of racketeering activity. Fonnie Willis, this prosecutor, is someone who likes using this statute. She has used it before in the hip hop world. She actually used it with a group of teachers involved with a cheating scandal. That would be the last group I would think of. But here she has looked and not only taken lots of people where we have 19 defendants, she's looked at intent in Georgia coming from intent also in other states. Well, these are not the only charges that the former president faces, but these are the most recent of charges. In New York State, prosecutors charged Trump with falsifying business records about hush money uh, for a payoff to a porn actor before the 2016 election. That trial is set to begin in March. In Florida, the Justice Department brought more than three dozen felony counts. They accused him of illegally possessing classified documents after leaving the White House and then concealing them from investigators. That trial in Florida begins in May. And in Washington, D.C., Trump was indicted on felony charges for working to overturn the results of the 2020 election in the run-up to the January 6th Capitol riot. 
The Justice Department brought four felony charges against him in that case. Now, the legal challenges in Georgia and New York, they are in the state courts. Brandon Lewis from our Verify team answers your questions about whether Trump could pardon himself in the latest cases if he's reelected. A Fulton County grand jury returned a true bill of indictment. Georgia prosecutors indicted former President Donald Trump on charges of conspiracy and racketeering in connection to attempts to overturn the 2020 election. This is the former president's second indictment in state court. And soon after the case was unsealed, some people began searching online about whether Trump could pardon himself in the state cases if he's reelected as president. So let's verify. Our sources are the Georgia State Board of Pardons and Paroles, Georgia State Law, the Georgia Justice Project, the New York State Constitution, and the New York Executive Clemency Bureau. The U.S. Constitution gives the president broad power to issue pardons in offenses against the United States, which legal experts say only refers to federal convictions, and it's a legal gray area whether presidents could pardon themselves. When it comes to state charges, each state has its own rules. In Georgia, the pardon process is overseen by the Board of Pardons and Paroles. The five-member board is appointed by the governor, but works as an independent agency. The state requires convicts complete at least five years of their sentence and not have any pending charges against them before requesting a pardon. The board then conducts an investigation and then votes whether to grant a pardon. In New York, the governor has the sole authority to issue pardons. She can also unilaterally grant a commutation, which reduces a person's sentence if they've served at least half of their minimum prison term and were sentenced to more than a year in prison. So, no, Trump cannot pardon himself in state cases if he's reelected. A conviction in the Georgia case, or really any other, though, would not prevent Trump from pursuing the White House or serving as president. And he is a frontrunner for the GOP presidential nomination. Other Republicans vying for the nomination include Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, former Vice President Mike Pence, former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley, and U.S. Senator Tim Scott from South Carolina. The first Republican presidential debate, it's scheduled for August the 23rd.